Similar to Wang Qiang, number 54 super killer, Yang Xinghai was an active serial killer in the country of China. He would amass a victim count that beats Wang's by roughly 15. And along with Wang Qiang, is considered as one of the worst serial killers in Chinese history. Yang was born on July 29, 1968, in Zhangyang County, Henan, China. He was the youngest out of four siblings and grew up impoverished, and his family was said to have been the poorest in the village they lived in. Growing up, Yang was said to have been an intelligent kid. His family recounts that Yang would fill notebooks with ideas for stories and films that he wanted to one day put out into the world. Which gave the idea that Yang's imagination was immense, because it's claimed that he created an entirely fictional place called Plato Flats, that would be the main location for many of his stories involving murder and gruesome ideas of the like. When taking this into consideration, was this his expression of what he would soon become? It's only an assumption at this point. But he was also said to have been an introvert who never really interacted with anyone. It seemed that interactions with other human beings was difficult for Yang, and he mostly kept to himself. Information on Yang's upbringing is sparse, as not much is known about his early life, and whether or not his family dynamic would influence what he would become is unknown. Yang would eventually commit to not apply his intelligence to schooling and would drop out of high school at the age of 17, which also prompted him to leave his home and never return. In an attempt to support himself on his own, Yang began working odd jobs here and there, never staying in one location for too long. He became a common drifter and general laborer, though this lifestyle wouldn't appeal to Yang for long because he would begin committing petty theft as a means to survive, and he would make his way through four different provinces stealing what he could. Since he was clever, he would find the perfect opportunities to take things without being noticed, which would continue until he was finally caught in 1988 when he was 20 years old. As punishment, Yang was sent to a labor camp for three years and was finally released in 1991. But habits die hard, because shortly after he was given freedom, Yang would resort to theft yet again. Though this time, he would be apprehended rather quickly and during that same year he was sentenced to five more years at a labor camp. At this point, he will have served a total of eight years for theft and was released for the second time in 1996. Maybe at this point, Yang will have learned his lesson, right? Well, in terms of theft, he wouldn't indulge his need to steal much anymore, but what he would do instead is begin predation on an opportunity to sexually assault. And so, during the same year he was released for the second time, Yang would attempt to rape a woman. Luckily, she managed to escape his attack and swiftly reported him to the authorities. So, shortly after, Yang was apprehended and sentenced to five years in prison, though only four years into his sentence, he would be released a year early and was walking the streets of his province yet again. After his release, sometime during the same year, he would begin a relationship with a woman. Somehow, he was able to court her and they became an item. But his past depravity would soon come back to bite him because his girlfriend would find out what he had done. She would catch word of his attempted rape charge and accordingly dumped him on the spot. Of course, a psychopath like Yang wouldn't take too kindly to this notion, and he would seethe with rage, blaming everything in the world instead of his own conscious action to commit crimes for the better part of his life. As a true narcissist, Yang would blame society for what had happened to him, and he would begin to disassociate with reality to begin methodically plotting his revenge. You see, Yang knew what he was doing would result in a long prison sentence or even death, so he would plan each attack so as to prolong his freedom while acting out his horrible plot. Yang would utilize axes, shovels, knives, and hammers in an attempt to keep the police from creating an avatar who was committing these murders. An avatar is just a preconceived idea or mold of who this person is without actually knowing who it is. 
which makes it easier to find the real culprit. But I digress. If that wasn't enough of an evasion, Yang would also wear different sized shoes and new clothes to each of his murder scenes. And he would immediately get rid of the evidence once he was finished by burning or throwing them into a nearby river. Though the biggest piece of evidence left behind would be the DNA he would leave at each of his crime scenes. Because Yang would not only kill, but if he came across a female victim, he would take advantage of them sexually before brutally ending their life. Though there were instances where the opportunity to sexually assault a victim would be the only opportunity he had and thus would commit his heinous act, but ultimately let his victim survive and run away. Yang would roam across four different provinces to find his prey, Anhui, Hibi, Henan, and Shandong, where he would sneak into homes at local farms and go to work. Yang would eliminate entire families, entire generations of people who never deserved such a gruesome demise. He would begin by eliminating the patriarchy of the house, the father, and move on to the children leaving the mother as his last victim so he could have his way with her before delivering the same demise her family had just experienced. And this would go on for four years. This monster would have zero concern for his actions and the victims he targeted. In one recorded recounting of a crime scene left by Yang on December 6, 2002, a heartbroken 68-year-old father named Lu Zanwei recounted the events of him discovering his entire family slaughtered. His son, a 30-year-old farmer named Lu, his daughter-in-law, both his granddaughter and grandson, as well as his wife, were brutally murdered in the house they had recently sold. They were beaten with a hammer to the head. The 68-year-old Lu stated that when he realized that his family hadn't arrived or sent any form of communication, he went to the old farmhouse and stumbled across a grisly scene. Almost instantly as he walked in, he noticed his granddaughter dead on the floor, with blood on her face and a hole in her head, presumably where Yang had attacked her with his hammer. And as he made his way through the house, everything was covered in blood as he came across each of his family members deceased. When he came across his wife, she was miraculously still breathing with major head trauma, though seemingly all motor skills had been degraded since she could only blink her eyes. She would later die at the hospital on December 16, 2002, just 10 days later after she was discovered on the floor of that horrid scene. It turns out that the only reason Lu Sr. survived was because he had spent the night at the new house that the family was planning to move into on December 9, 2002, just three days after their lives were unfairly snuffed out. A truly tragic and unfortunate event for anyone to go through, which wiped out two whole generations of a family who were taken away far too early than they deserved. But this was the way this sick monster would function. His psychology was a tainted mess, though not to the point that he couldn't process how to claim lives without being caught. Yang was so aware of what he wanted to do that he would scout the houses he wanted to target days in advance. Normally, focusing on a farmhouse in rural areas, he would acquire his tools and prepare. Once the time came, he would bike to the houses in the middle of the night and begin enacting his evil on the innocents. And this would go on for an additional year until he was booked in November of 2003. Yang would be inside of a nightclub when police would initiate a routine survey of the area inside. It's said that as soon as the police appeared, Yang began acting extremely odd and suspicious which prompted the police to zero in on him. Under probable cause that he wasn't acting right, they arrested him and took him to jail. While incarcerated, the authorities would collect DNA from him and were shocked to discover that it matched the DNA that had been left behind at most of his crime scenes. 
You see, police were having a very difficult time progressing through these crime scenes left behind by Yang because they didn't have any strong leads and were confused by the methods used to kill. Remember, Yang would utilize a variety of weapons to kill, which made it hard to pinpoint any M.O. of the gruesome scenes that he left behind. But now, they had definitive proof of who was responsible. And after a long session of interrogations, Yang would finally admit to killing at least 67 people and raping another 25. As soon as the media learned about his arrest and subsequent confession, the nation was in an uproar because no one knew that there had been a rampant murder, or at the very least, multiple murder occurring across a span of four years. Speculation gives way to the idea that the Chinese government would censor any reporting of these cases because of fear that it would reflect negatively on the internal security of the country. Well, how effective that was in preventing people from being slaughtered is extremely dismal. Regardless, the murderer that had terrorized countless victims was finally captured, and he would gain the nickname Monster Killer a very fitting description of just exactly what he amounted to. And as callous as he was while killing, he'd be just as so while confessing to his crime, stating, when I killed people, I had a desire to kill more. This inspired me to kill. I don't care whether they deserved it or not. It is none of my concern. I have no desire to be part of society. Society is not my concern. Spoken straight from the killer's mouth, this vile waste of space would soon face his punishment. And in a short trial, Yang would be sentenced to death by firing squad. And on February 14, 2004, Yang the monster killer Xing Hai was executed. Yang Xing Hai was a vile beast that never deserved to be part of society. A society that was mostly trusting that the world was a good place, he would take advantage of the set norms and executed his plot to spite it. He was a coward that snuck up on people because any other form would probably result in his death or injury. How can these evil individuals rationalize their horrid activity? What drove this waste of breath to enact pain to others undeservingly? In any case, thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate every one of you. If you enjoy the content, please leave a comment, a like, and subscribe, as I'll be posting the videos weekly so you can have something interesting to listen to. With that being said, take care and until next time.